Hey guys, uh, I'm gonna do a little quick tutorial rundown of how the JB Tuned um, Flex Fuel lines are installed on a Mark 7 GTI Golf R. Um, it's a really nice high quality kit, but unfortunately it didn't really come with any instructions and it's not super easy. Um, really quick, here is what I ended up getting, which was the GTI Mark 7 Flex Fuel Fuel Lines Kit, and the Flex Fuel Sensor Fittings, you're going to want those. Um, it comes with three of them, and I'll explain why you get three. Um, your first step is to run the car with uh, the fuse with the low pressure fuel pump pulled. You can see right there, it's fuse 15, I've pulled it out. It came from this top bank right there top slot, in that bank rather. Um, pull that, run the car until it dies, preferably, or starts sput sputtering heavily. Uh, the, prim the primary goal for that is to really remove any pressure in the fuel line, as you're going to be pulling off fuel lines from the high pressure fuel pump here. Um, and then the check valve over here. Um, so yeah, once you run it down and the car is sputtering or, or dies, you can shut it off and then get yourself some rags. There's still going to be fuel spillage, um, but essentially you can start with the OEM line. Uh, oh, really quick, I should say that I did order the fuel kit, which, excuse me a moment while I grab it. Um, here's the fuel it kit lines. Uh, they're, they're okay lines, but the, these Otica clamps are absolute shit. Um, these pop off the nipples for the uh, fuel lines. It happened to me three times. Once I had, um, once I had these pop off the flex fuel sensor just by touching this singular blue release clip. It's like a hairpin trigger. You know, that you have uh, these two connect to the flex fuel sensor in the middle and you have the sensor sender thing. Um, if anything touched these, and there, there are clips on my intake manifold, <coughs> excuse me, that would touch these, the fucking thing would just like pop off and spray fuel everywhere. You know, my family was in the car. It was a dangerous situation that I'm pretty pissed off about. Um, so at any moment, these these could let go, these Odeker clamps, because I had them let go. Uh, people had them let go on the high pressure fuel pump side, mine let go on the check valve side. So I said goodbye to these, and I'm like, yeah, I'm getting JB tuned at the recommendation of other people online. So, uh, you know, if you're going fuel it, maybe buy the sensor off them in the sender, the, like the little unit that you plug in that has the uh, Bluetooth but get your lines from JB Tune. Uh, JB Tune lines are really high quality. Here they are. A really nice weave. Um, there is also a metal weave as well. Let me try to focus this better. So it's metal reinforced and then there's this hard plastic line, which I guess is normal. I thought that was a little strange that I'm putting hard plastic on this and then you know, was worried that uh, it would leak because it's not like rubber, but apparently that's normal. I'll be putting that on later. Um, so basically what I did is I, I, in the kit, got this this line here, and I got this other line here that goes back to the, um, sorry, excuse me. It goes back to the check valve and I found this very confusing because the check valve itself has no um, threads to it, whereas, you know, this this is threaded here. You can hopefully see. Zoom into that a little bit. Um, but basically, <clears throat> what's going to end up happening is I'm going to take the check valve off and then this singular um, sensor fitting 
will go down onto that because that has, once this comes off, there's a barb there and this is going to clip down onto the barb and then this fitting attaches to this. Um, so I'll be doing that later. And I'm gonna try to go over how to take this off as well. Uh, it's not super easy or super straightforward by any means, but it's not terrible either once you know how to do it. Um, thank the guys on the EQT forum equilibrium tuning on Facebook for uh, going over that and helping me out with that. Appreciate it. So you get these two lines and then you also get um, two more fittings. So what I ended up doing was taking uh, these, these fittings here and screwing them on. And I used a little bit of um, plumber's silicone, whatever it is, the tape as well, just for, um, you know, good measure. I did the same thing with my racing line can, so I, I just don't want that stuff leaking. Um, and here's the, the flex fuel sensor in the middle here. That you connect it to, these clips just pop right onto it. I think I can try to show you that. I hope. weird angle and it's hard to do while holding my phone so but yeah essentially they, they just pop right on these where did my thing go oh, there so. these guys just once once you've screwed this on right you know it's going to screw into the line there it literally just plugs right on and then it won't pull off it's uh on there pretty well you can tug at it and so it is it's safer because it's much harder to get off like you're not just going to press like the tiniest little bit and the whole thing's going to pop off uh, which personally i like um this oh, just a word of warning this is a little bit weird this clip here like once this goes on the high pressure fuel pump uh this clip will not fit over it. I might have to replace it with like a regular screw clamp, which is unfortunate because this hardware looks kind of nice. It's like cleaner. And I like, you know, I like the look of like cleaner hardware in the engine bay. Um, our engines are not the most beautiful thing to begin with and it'd be nice to dress it up a little bit as I'm done with, you know, some billet pieces. I had this in billet too, but I like the yellow, so. Um, yeah, getting this other piece off, the check valve. Sorry, let me get proper lighting from here. All right, getting this check valve off, what I did. Let me see if I have my tool. So I ended up going through my computer um, building hardware kit, like I have an iFixit kit. Um, I pulled out these computer tweezers and I bent the ends inward like that because this check valve, you can see, let me try to zoom in. Um, see that little black area right there? There's a clip in there and there's one on the other side too. And what you have to do, sorry. Uh, what you have to do is squeeze them in at the same time. So basically I took the clip, sorry, I took the tweezers, put it on either side, and then squeezed it in. Obviously it was doing this with two hands, I'm holding a camera with one, so. You squeeze it in, I choked up on it, and like pushed it as hard as I could, and then just kind of like jammed it up and down until it popped. Uh, took like, five seconds to do it, but I was struggling with it last night for half an hour because I had no idea what I was doing. Um, but yeah, so just get something like this where you can compress both sides at the same time and uh, push it in and then like wiggle it, like jam it up and down until and then give it a good yank off. Um, another thing to note is I saw online that there's all these other types of check valves that have a special tool that kind of go like surround it and they have a uh, like a sheath and it like goes up inside and then you push down. 
I think what that does is something similar where it releases the clips so you can pull the thing off. I don't think this works like that and I don't think you could ever get, this is already part way off. Um, I don't think you could ever get that um, underneath this because there's clearance now because I've basically already pulled it off. But uh, there is no clearance when it's on. So <clears throat> let's take a look at this. I'll take this off. Take a better look. I don't know if I can see in here or not. See the clips. This is probably not too helpful. It's a little helpful. There's. So I can take a focus. It's hard to get a good lighted angle. You can kind of see the clip in there. You get the idea. Um, so yeah, I was wondering, <laughs> I was freaking out because I'm like, I got this kit and I'm like, I don't think that that thing is threatened. So how the hell is this going to go on? Well, um, I had an epiphany last night as two different comments kind of came together into one. I was like, oh, maybe, maybe this thing is barbed. And I was like, yes, that, that must be it because they gave me three of these. So moment of truth, this basically just goes on simply like that there you go now it's on it should not be coming off um i probably shouldn't have done that because now it's going to be harder to get this thing on i would recommend um doing the threaded tape i'll, I'll pop it off but do the threaded tape plumber's tape and then you know attach this first then pop it on that's basically it. Um, it's pretty simple once you know what you're doing. So just to review, check valve, you need the pinchy tool, take that off, you know, yank it up and down. There's a joke in there somewhere. Um, and then basically you get this line coming off here, goes into the flex fuel sensor. Uh, this is the sensor here. This right here is like the unit that um, Feel It sends you. Is that their logo? Yeah, I believe. I can't really see it too well from here. Yeah, that's their logo. Um, that's the sender that you can kind of see the ethanol content on your phone. And then this plugs in uh, to the side which goes over to the HP FP. I think I can trim this line, I'm not positive, but I'm going to attempt that later. It's kind of too long. I want this sitting here. Um, and the line is a little bit long to do that. It's gonna stick out, so I think I might try to trim a couple inches off. Let's see where I'm at. So uh, one more thing I wanted to add really quick is the two clips <clears throat> that this kit comes with have these windows here in the in, in the clip where you can see uh, like the white tab that's gonna pop off the ethanol sensor. Use these for the ethanol sensor and then the last one that I'm using for the fuel line does not have uh, those clips. So it's harder to remove. I mean you know you can still remove it if you need to. You can see the white clip down there. I used um, my little pinchy tool. Basically, I put it around this one. I just took it off for the hell of it to try it out um, and show you guys what it's like. I took the pinchy tool and put it like around this. This phone sucks at uh, focusing, sorry. And, and did that. It was really hard to get like the pinchy parts, or, you know, the sharp parts on that tab, so I didn't kind of do that. But yeah, it's pretty easy. That's how it comes off. This thing just stays on there, and then when you want to put it back on, uh, you just basically push it back on. And it's being a pain in the ass right now because I have one hand. <laughs> it's totally like, yeah, fuck you. You're doing a video. Yeah, fuck with you. There we go. Cool. Cool times. Yeah, it's uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, 
this will help me not burn down my car and barbecue my family. It's good. One more piece to the puzzle that I wanted to mention. Um, I'd like to cut these tabs off the manifold right here, not, not go down, you know, into this necessarily, although that might be nice too, to be able to trim that down. Um, I could probably fit a Dremel in there, but I think that's just overkill. Um, I want to cut these two off and these two down in here. And what that's effectively going to allow me to do is to move the sensor that way and then get this line to clip into here to actually sit in there and then uh, this line will, this end of the line will sit in that clip. So all that can move over and then be like a little bit safer that it's locked into something. After I do that and I realize, you know, how much length I have on this side, I'll cut this, this end. Uh, I did get confirmation that those are sliceable. Um, I'm hoping that these tin shears will be enough to cut through the plastic. I'm pretty sure it will be. Um, and for this line, I got these, or had these. Um, these are pretty good because they have that rounded edge. They're super sharp. They're good for cutting um, circular lines because they kind of contain the line and hold it while it cuts through. It, 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 I think I got it for electrical when I was working on my car stereo. And it would cut through, you know, four gauge wire, which is pretty thick. So it shouldn't have any issues going through that. I imagine I'll probably cut off a good amount, like a couple inches down here, but we'll see. Um, I also got. I forgot I had these, but essentially I got these off Amazon and these are really like the same thing as this clip here. Maybe not quite as nice, but um, they, I have different sizes, so I'll be able to get rid of this thing and use an appropriate size. Because this is just like a little bit too small to really fit. Like once this is on, over the bar, but it just won't, you can't even connect this, uh, this screw to tighten it, so let's see how all this comes up. All right, I broke out the tripod for this one, uh, so you can have both hands free. So I'm going to start by taking this off because, um, again, too small. So I ended up dropping down to a 10 to 12 mil, um, 14 is too big. I took the screw out and you just, you need to kind of pry it open. It's a bit frayed, you gotta get it over there and then you can just kind of uh, tighten it back up. And then once that's good, you can put the screw back through. I just wanna double check that this is going to A little bit loose, but um, once it goes over the barb, the, the tube expands. So, I'm make sure I can thread this back in as well. It's a little bit weird right now. <laughs> I don't know if it's cross threading, I think it might be. To start it correctly, um, after prying it open, you kind of need to make it so that you can get the screw in straight. So I had to open it up a little bit, but then I was able to re-thread it. I'll leave it a little bit loose. I'm gonna cut this now, figure out what size I need it now, um, work this tube onto the HPFP nip, and then uh, tighten it down with this. By the way, I'm not responsible if you blow up your car, cut your fingers off, or 
do stupid shit. That's on you. Disclaimer added. All right, so I'm kind of getting it like about where I want, making sure that the it's plugged in where I want it on the manifold, and then uh, over here as well, and then just kind of giving a general, getting a general measurement of this. Just make sure it's going to go on enough. I'm like pushing a little bit on this. That's fine, but I don't want it to be short either. Looks like it's going to be about right there. Here's the moment of truth where I try to cut this thing. Hopefully all goes well. Make sure you cut that straight as possible because you're going to be pushing it up against this. You want it to go as far back as possible. Flush. Uh, cool. So now I can toss this on. It's, uh, it's pretty tough to get on. You're going to kind of push and wiggle, put a lot of force into it. easier before and I had just this piece here probably because I just had more length to play around with um, but I think you're gonna want it up against the back of that that's pretty much it um, then you want to roll this over yeah see now it's like snug nice and snug now I can tighten that down and it'll be I'm not sure, this is a pretty stiff line, so I'm not so sure it's gonna sit in this holder anyway. Or even, uh, or even this one down here, which I would like, but I don't think I'm gonna get that. So the best I can hope for is maybe to secure it in this one. And even then it's like, again, it's touching this, which it's touching the, housing which gets hot it's rubbing against that which I don't love seems like there's never a good way to run these things like the OEM one fits perfectly in all those clips right but this one not so much um, also be careful if you do decide to cut these which I don't think is so necessary it did allow me to move the fuel sensor up but um, you know if you decide to cut those clips over here and over here that you try to hold the plastic when you do without cutting your fingers because um, that plastic's going to go flying into your engine bay and you don't want to land, you don't want it landing on something that will get hot. So that was about it. Uh, good luck. Enjoy.